Hi, I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. And I thought I'd give you a little bit of behind the scenes things here. I get a lot of questions on uh, some of the projects that I put in, especially in our beginner laser projects. Um, is that all like just done live? You know, do you rehearse? Well, I don't exactly rehearse. And it, nothing is really scripted. At least it's not written down. I kind of have an idea in the old noggin up here what I want to do. But before I do go through and do one of these projects, I do what's called prototyping. I'll do some prototypes and design and sometimes not everything works out. Um, and then I, in fact that's what I'm doing right now, I'm prototyping a project here, a couple of them, and I check them to make sure that they all fit together correctly, like this one here, or sometimes you get some that don't fit together quite right, like this here, so it needs some adjustment. And uh, this here happens to be a oversized coaster holder, which will be an upcoming project. I've uh, been requested to make a coaster holder that will hold coasters larger than the standard little 3 and 4 inch. And this one doesn't fit together right, but this is going to be for coasters up to 5 inches. When I get the design down just right. A little off here on one of my tabs. But uh, just thought I'd give you a little bit of behind the scenes look here. Also, here's something you're not used to seeing in my shop here. I do have enclosures for lasers. I got a couple of them. I got one up in the loft. I got one down here. They're both portable. And this is the Otur one. I've got the Otur Laser Master 3 in there because it works with the lights and fan and stuff in there. And there is an exhaust fan out here. Uh, when I'm doing videos uh, for these different projects, I normally do it with the laser out in the open so I can easily video everything. But here it's a little bit tougher to video what's going on inside there. So as you see, it's kind of hard to get a good look on what's going on in there. This is why I do things out in the open so that uh, things are a little bit more clear, to, especially to the new user. And just in case you're curious how this vents, uh, this sort of tour enclosure has a 3 inch outlet on it. I put an adapter on there uh, to go to 4 inch and then this hose which is plenty long so I can move it around to different places in here runs up to above the shop door there's a blower up there and then this vents to the outside above the door so I know somebody's going to say that should be a metal hose and yes it should but in fact the uh, enclosure I have upstairs in the loft is does have metal venting on both my uh, diode laser enclosure and my CO2 laser. Those are both vented with metal ducting. Uh, this is plastic because it's very, very portable. I can wad it up and stick it out of the way when I'm not using it. And I am always right here. I am not away from this. So if some spark or something should generate and get up in there and uh, melt that or start a fire, I will be right here. So it's not like I wander off while this is running. Same holds true for these enclosures. The, when I am operating these, uh, especially these fabric ones like this, I know they're supposed to be fireproof and I've done some videos on testing with a torch and everything else, but I do not leave my lasers unattended. I am always right in the very close proximity to them. Okay, so while we're on the subject of enclosures, I know somebody's going to ask, well, how well do they actually work? They work very well. I mean, there's, I am cutting cedar and you're cutting in a grave in cedar making some uh, signs for an order and of course I did the prototype first which is right here but since the prototype worked out well I am I got a batch run to make I need to make quite a few of these the weather outside is very cold um, I can't leave the shop doors open uh, it's a little bit inconvenient to change between pieces when they're in an enclosure which is why I like to have them out in the open but I can have the shop doors open but when it's 20 degrees of snow out there, can't do that. So yes, this does work well. Uh, this particular one happens to be our Tur brand. Uh, it, no, no sponsors here, I'm just pointing these things out. And I can put other, different size lasers in here. My longer B1 won't fit in here because it's too big. And my extended X-Tool D1, which is like this long, won't, obviously won't fit in here either. Uh, my Atzer also will not fit in this one but it will fit in my Comgro enclosure that's up in the loft. So 
when I need to use the enclosures, I use them. Otherwise, uh, as a personal preference, I prefer to have them out so I can swap parts around quickly and keep an eye on things very close. Uh, of course, the disadvantage there is I have to wear goggles most of the time, but here I don't. This is all shielded. I can look right at that through that window, and yeah, I can tell the laser's running, but it's not going to hurt your eyes at all. So there's a couple little highlights about these enclosures. Uh, they are fabric, they're small, they're light, I can pick them up and move them around easily. That's why I haven't built any big wood permanent enclosures. May do that sometime, but for right now that's not in the plan. Although there is nothing wrong with those. So this one here just finished up so I could take it out. This uh, also, you can, if you want to enclose everything, you can zip that one shut. I like to be able to look in there and see what's going on. Make sure nothing is amiss. And after it's finished, I always wait a minute or two to let any smoke in there clear out the vents. So there's another one down. I'll have to get this loaded up for the next one. Here again, the only real disadvantage with using one of these enclosures is uh, the ability to get in here and access your stuff without things being in the way. Um, I've got stops in here and I'm not running these in batches because I'm using up scraps. I have cutoffs from uh, a lot of the different sign works we do and um, I've got my width set in here with some stops but the length varies according to what size the scrap is. So normally I would not start this until the enclosure is closed but we'll hit start here. And I'll run out and it'll start running and I'll and it, it close this up I just fold this thing down and zip up the zippers. Another upcoming project I'll give you a little bit of preview of is uh, going to be what they call a tissue box cover or Kleenex box, oh, that's a brand name. And of course there's different size boxes. So I have to make uh, design boxes, covers to go over these different size boxes and probably going to use just these two. I know there's one other size yet that is kind of like metric. It kind of falls in between these two and I have done one of those but unless you're in a country that has metric tissues, uh, they're not going to fit. So I'm going to make these. Now I also have to size the wood. Uh, I'm going to try to, use, to design these using, for at least for the smaller box, to use these Dollar Tree shapes because just about everybody can get those. But I'm also going to size it to use uh, eighth inch plywood. But not everybody can has easy access to the eighth inch plywood or they have to pay a stupid price for it at a hobby store. Uh, if you have a Home Depot close to you, and I'm not a big fan of Home Depot, but that is one place you can get this eighth inch plywood and it's kind of has a birch or basswood finish on one side and kind of this neat grain pattern on the other side. So it's kind of a neat wood to work with. And I've done a video on how I cut this up and store it because it's really, really hard to keep this stuff flat. So if you do cut a bunch of it up or if you buy a bunch of these shapes, stack it up somewhere and put a heavy weight on it. Put a piece of cardboard there heavy weight keep everything flat so it doesn't decide to uh, curl up or do something weird on you. I mentioned this in some other videos if, if you don't have one of these little digital calipers this is an extremely handy tool to have when you're working with doing laser cutting and you don't have to go out and buy a real expensive Starrett. You can go to your local uh, Harbor Freight store and get one of the little cheap pit, uh, Pittsburgh ones just one of the things though with the Pittsburgh brand, it, it works fine, it's accurate, but don't close the case because if you do it pushes a power button on and runs your battery down. It's a, kind of a common thing you'll see on the reviews. But I, I have to measure my wood so that I can size the tabs and these boxes properly. So for example this Dollar Tree wood here, this is two millimeter. Now my eighth inch plywood, which is nominal eighth inch is 2.5 millimeter. So 
If you would take the 2.5 millimeter file, for example, and use this 2 millimeter wood, nothing's going to fit together right. And the same token, if you do it the other way around, it's not going to work right. So I make these for a couple different sizes and thicknesses of material, and uh, then I also trial it on different lasers. For example, this one here's a 20 watt. I will also run it on a 10 watt. Uh, I'll probably run it on a 30 watt or a 40 watt just so I can have recommendations for settings for you to use as a starting point. Although you should still always do a test cut, test engrave on your material because those materials can differ. So this is a uh, little prototype from uh, one of the tissue boxes. And this is if I, how I can decide if I like my design or not after it's actually made. Yeah, for example, here after I saw that as just a line engrave, I decided to actually make that a cutout. So there's a little bit of uh, behind the scenes look at prototyping and there's pieces I cut out and I'll put those together and well, they should fit over this I kind of piece it around there but and I've got another one in here running right now another prototype and like I say I always prototype uh, these kinds of projects before I actually take them live and offer them to you to make sure everything fits together and everything comes out perfect so if there's a little snake peek Got anything out of this? Appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.